If you're ever walking down this road here in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, you might find yourself in front of this sign, Elizabeth's Spring, it says, a national historic site. It makes no mention of exactly what the spring is, where to go from here to find it, or really much of anything at all outside of a kind of vague hint that something interesting might be nearby. After all, there's no trails here angling off the road, no other streets, no arrow pointing in a specific direction, nothing. I think it's safe to say that if you didn't come to this place with prior knowledge of the spring's location and history, it'd be pretty tough to figure it out from this sign. But if you did come here with the intention of visiting the spring, you'd know that getting to it is actually rather simple. You just jump this guardrail, run across the grass into the forest, walk all the way up to the railroad embankment and look for this little wooden backdrop. Then you'll need to dig out the leaves, mud, and trash, and voila! See how you can just barely make out the edges of a very worn inscription here? This is part of a rock that was put here back in 1868 to commemorate the location of the spring, which is now fully dried up. As you can see, this site is a little more than hard to find nowadays if you don't know what you're looking for. Even more than I was expecting, honestly, when I got here I was thinking I was going to see the stone marker fully exposed rather than dug under two inches of dirt. But Make no mistake, despite its low profile, Elizabeth Spring has quite the interesting story behind it. You see, this little spring was a pretty well-known spot back in the early days of European colonization of North America. Throughout the 1600s especially, the most commonly traveled route between Providence, Rhode Island and Southern Connecticut, known as the Pequot Path, went right by it. So the spring became a bit of an unofficial pit stop along the route. It wasn't uncommon at all to see weary travelers crowded around the spring, filling cups and watering horses, taking a break from the road. Among the travelers to make use of the spring during numerous long journeys were a group of three. Roger Williams, a famous early statesman and minister here in Rhode Island, John Winthrop, the governor of Connecticut at the time, and Winthrop's wife, Elizabeth. Not much is known about the specifics of these trips and stops at the spring, except that Elizabeth, in particular, seemed to always enjoy its waters and the rest it offered along the path. Unfortunately, though, these stops at the spring came to an end when Elizabeth died in 1672 after decades of marriage to John. Shortly after her death, Roger Williams visited the spring again, this time on his own. Afterward, he wrote a letter to John Winthrop telling of the visit to the spring and mourning the loss of Elizabeth. Describing the atmosphere at the spring without Elizabeth there, Roger Williams wrote this. Here is the spring, say I, but where? is Elizabeth. My charity answers. She is gone to the eternal spring. It's actually that very same phrase that is engraved on the rock we dug out of the mud here too. Those couple of lines became so closely associated with our humble spring that it began a new life as Elizabeth's spring, a local point of pride and history. You can find references to it in books and newspapers from all across the last 350 years since that letter was written. There's simple things like this brief mention in a 1926 history book or this reference in the 1885 Rhode Island State Census, but also no shortage of very interesting little tidbits you can find along the way from the 17th century to 2022. I really like this magazine article from 1883 that mentions the spring. The writer gets the story behind the spring's name a bit backwards, thinking that it was named for Roger Williams' wife rather than John Winthrop's. I just love this line here where they basically say, Elizabeth Spring was named for Roger Williams' wife, which is weird, because her name was Mary. Here's a passage from 1704, Elizabeth Winthrop's grandson visiting the spring and mentioning how it was named for his grandmother. Here's a newspaper article from 1896 talking about how a crazy man was found in the marsh created by the Elizabeth Spring. But out of all the little stories I found, this is my favorite. The Boston Home Journal back in 1903 tells the story of a field trip that a young girl's school took down to the spring. The teacher told them all about the spring and then read Roger Williams' words off the stone inscription, which, to remind you, were, Here is the spring, say I, but where is Elizabeth? 
My charity answers. She has gone to the Eternal Spring. After hearing that, a little girl from Newport piped up and asked if the class had time to visit the Eternal Spring before supper. Everybody else convinced her that it was probably better to go have dinner before worrying about the Eternal Spring. It's funny, right? In a child's mind, the Eternal Spring is just as reachable as Elizabeth's Spring. If we can visit one, why can't we visit the other? As adults, we understand the metaphor. The terrestrial Elizabeth Spring lies in parallel to the unknown of the Eternal Spring. But I think as time has passed and Elizabeth Spring has grown more and more forgotten and neglected, the years have actually birthed a new connection between the two springs. Our sign. Put up to simply commemorate Roger Williams' poem and the history he embedded into Elizabeth Spring, I think this sign actually helps to further his metaphor. Just as a person may see this sign and only have questions, where's Elizabeth Spring? What is it? How do I get there? Do I want to go there? What am I looking for? Any hint to the true nature of the eternal spring can be just as nebulous. And just as I can come to Elizabeth Spring prepared, certain that I'll find an exposed stone marker, only to discover it's actually lost under dirt and trash, the eternal spring can likewise humble any expectation. We may think we see signs of the eternal spring, what it is, where it is, its shape, significance, or even if it actually exists at all, but none of us will truly ever know for sure till we get there. Thanks for watching, guys.